policy makers, government officials, thought leaders, and major gathering places such as the World Economic Forum have articulated in the last few years that we are in the very beginning stages of what is known as the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0. Their individual and collective expectation is that in the next few decades, the vast majority of us living on the planet will experience highly disruptive, massive, and unprecedented changes, many of which will lead to better outcomes, some of which may not lead to better outcomes, as history would suggest. So it's important for us to sit back and reflect what is this industry 4.0? How does it affect humanity 4.0? So that's the purpose of the next few minutes. If we look at history, in the late 1700s, James Watt from Scotland patented the Watt steam engine. So water and steam power replaced power from animal and human labor. That led to mechanization that totally disrupted the lives of tens of millions of people, led to elimination of jobs. But eventually, it started the Industrial Revolution, the first Industrial Revolution. And James Watt is considered the father of that Industrial Revolution. Then in the mid-1800s, we had the second Industrial Revolution partly aided by the availability of electricity and mass production, major factories came into existence all across the globe. That again disrupted many, many lives. Eventually, that also led to very positive outcome for the world. Then fast forward, or another almost 100 years, we came to the third industrial revolution in the mid-1900s aided by global supply chains, the microelectronics industry revolution, and subsequently by the creation of the internet and global connectivity through digital technologies and robotics. This completely transformed the world, and many of you, especially the younger people sitting in the audience, are the beneficiaries of this industrial revolution. So if you look at the three previous industrial revolutions, they led to enormous benefits for humanity. They eliminated many kinds of jobs, but they created more jobs of a very different kind after disrupting global society in very profound ways. They led to intended consequences, but they also created unintended consequences that we didn't think of. Mass production and the automobiles changed the way we live and drive and where we live in the suburbs, created pollution, traffic jams, lost productivity, climate change. We created nuclear science, nuclear power. It led to nuclear wars. It also created unintended consequences. The internet is wonderful. Digital technologies are wonderful. But there is the fear of cyber crimes, cyber security. So with every positive aspect, there can be a negative aspect. So the question is, what is the fourth industrial revolution, and how do we maximize the positive and minimize the negative? The fourth industrial revolution, by definition, is the unprecedented and unique convergence of the physical world, the digital world, and the biological world. And these come together through enablers such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, Internet of Things, robotics, precision medicine, personalized medicine, etc., etc. They also have some unique characteristics. The pace of change has never been faster. The pace of improvements in technology has never been faster. The other major difference this time around is that the individual citizen of the world, there are seven billion of us, 
We have the opportunity to connect with the cutting edge of the industrial revolution through mobile technology in unprecedented ways. So if you're an optimist, you would say that the, the total sum is much greater, will be much greater than the sum of the parts of the seven billion participants in this industrial revolution because of the enabling technologies and the connectivity. There are also other benefits of this. For example, education could be transformed in unprecedented ways, lifelong, through things like virtual reality, augmented reality, assisted technologies, robotics, you can make the life of the elderly more comfortable in the privacy and dignity of their own homes. In fact, NTU has sponsored a project through a program called Lilly, through artificial intelligence, to work with the elderly in EDB flats, not too far from our campus here. So there are potentially many, many benefits. Children with autism can perhaps learn much faster through these technologies uh, at their own pace to maximize their learning potential. There are also potentially unintended consequences that one needs to be mindful of. The 12 greatest disruptive technologies include mobile internet, they include advanced materials, autonomy, autonomous vehicles, drones, and driverless cars, and so forth. In a few years, we're going to have 5G coming in, which will make it even much better to connect if people have connectivity. But one of the things we have to be very careful about is how do we make sure that technology doesn't move too far ahead of people or society's ability to comprehend it, let alone create regulations, ethical guidelines, rules for following the technology. This is going to be extremely important. Just the mobile internet technology, according to McKinsey, is expected by 2025 to have a market potential of one trillion US dollars. So it's a substantial market for entrepreneurs. But there are also human characteristics. Humanity 4.0, what does it mean? What does it mean to be human? If machines and machine learning is going to make a lot of decisions based on massive data that's beyond the comprehension of an average human being, do humans have the opportunity to reverse machine decisions? Typically human characteristics, compassion, dignity, love, ethics, empathy, respect, sympathy, etc. will machines ever understand what they mean? And what any of these characteristics is for you may be slightly different than it is for me because my background, my journey, my cultural background may be different from yours. So these are culturally defined, locally defined, depending on one's life experiences. So will machines ever understand these traits? We often tend to focus on big technologies. We often forget that the little technologies can be much more useful sometimes. In the early 1960s, the then President of the United States, John Kennedy, made a famous statement. He said, we'll put man on the moon before the decade is over and we'll bring him home back safely. And we did, we put Neil Armstrong as the first person to walk on the moon. But somebody pointed out that remember, we put man on the moon before we put wheels on the suitcase. Wheels on the suitcase is much more useful on Earth. And it benefits hundreds of millions of people. But the patent for wheels on suitcase was filed after we put man on the moon. So innovation comes in many flavors. And we don't know what kind of new innovations will come in the future. So the Industry 4.0 has many issues that we need to focus on. If the rate of job creation lags behind the rate of job destruction through robotics and other technologies, then there is a danger that we'll have growing inequality, which already exists in most parts of the world. With growing inequality, there'll be societal unrest and political changes and social revolutions. You already see some evidence of this in North America, UK, and other places, and so forth. So that's one consequence. What is the definition of an educated person? If you have a university degree from a great institution like NTU, or if you, have a, if you graduate from junior college, 
what is the minimum body of knowledge that you are expected to know that enables, enables you to continuously change career and profession during a very long life as life expectancy increases? What does it mean to be human? Will, will we lose, lose some of our very precious human characteristics because of a machine age, decisions made, made by machines? People have talked about the so-called point of singularity when the machine intelligence will almost become comparable to human intelligence. People don't agree on when that will happen. It could be 20 years, 30 years. But still, if that happens, what does it really mean to be human? Will humans be able to reverse decisions made by machines in, in, in time? Intended benefits will come also with unintended consequences. Humans are very good at optimizing, very clever, very innovative. But they also can abuse and misuse technology either intentionally or unintentionally. And we know that from history. How do we avoid this? Then there is a very subtle point. Nature is imperfect. Humans are imperfect. With technology today, we have atomic clocks, precision medicine, precise GPS location, precision bombing in electronic wars. So in an imperfect world, if precision and perfection become the focal point, do we lose our ability as humans to wander, to make mistakes, to get lost, and pick up the pieces and learn in the process? There is truth and beauty in imperfection. Will we lose that? We don't want to. So we have to balance the good with the bad. So what does one do? So we have Industry 4.0, we have Humanity 4.0. Last year, I was appointed as the fourth president of NTU. So as NTU Leadership 4.0, earlier this year, we launched something called the NTU Institute of Science and Technology for Humanity. And the reason for this is we want to combine natural sciences and technology and engineering with social sciences, ethics, law, compassion, human characteristics, arts, humanities, uh, languages, which make us human. That doesn't mean technology is bad. Te technology can be very, very good. So an institution like Nanyang Technological University can play a pivotal role in not only shaping Industry 4.0, but also Humanity 4.0. And I hope, being an optimist, that at the end of this, many decades from now, we will come out much more positive, where the total outcome will be much greater than the sum of the parts. Thank you.